Hello, my name is Ola, and I'm going to be reacting to The Animatrix by Nostalgia Critic. Uh, yeah, this is a uh, an, an anthology, an anthology uh, animated film. Uh, each each story is a different, you know, it follows a different character. It follows, you know, it's a, each one is a different animation. Uh, it's, it's really cool, you know, I really really recommend you know you checking it out if you haven't seen it or if you just haven't seen it in a while you know like it's pretty cool you know especially when um one of the stories d dives deeper into like uh the the story of the matrix of like you know how it came to be um how um we got taken over by the machines and how uh you know they pretty much put this put us in like a simulation you know it's really cool you know and uh yeah let's see what nostalgia critic thinks about it, what he has to say about it and if uh you want to like come subscribe my channel you can if you don't want to that's fine too here we go Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic guy, remember it? So you don't have to. Well, seeing how The Matrix clearly ripped off some of Japan's most famous animes, Japan decided they wanted to steal some of that shit back. Hence the Animatrix. After the success of the first Matrix movie and in between filming the Matrix sequels, several animators and storytellers, including the Wachowskis, decide to get together and do a series of shorts based on the idea of the Matrix. The result is the Animatrix, an anthology that many claim is actually better than the Matrix films themselves. In many respects, they're kinda right. In others, well, let's just say the subtlety of the Matrix mixed with the subtlety of Japan is anything but... subtle. So let's take a quick glance at one source material stealing from another source material stealing from another source material. This is the Animatrix. Mm -hmm. The first one is The Final Flight of the Osiris, a CG short written by the Wachowskis. And boy, does it show. Aside from the CGI looking for the most part pretty damn impressive, especially when it comes to human textures, it has all the Wachowski trademarks. Totally pointless action scene? Check. Good looking blands trying to sound important but instead sounding disinterested? Go, go, go. Check. Horny sexual issues being explored under the guise of avant-garde storytelling? Double check. The story is the Osiris has discovered a drill that the machines have built to break into Zion. And they have to get that information to Zion as fast as possible. The Matrix for some reason is the only way they can get that information to them. Does this technological world hate phones for some reason? And they all end up dying in the process. Um... Sucks to be them? It would be nice if they actually let us, oh, I don't know, get to know these people so it felt more important when they got axed off. But it's pretty obvious that's not the short's intention. The intention, like anything related to the Matrix, is to be an exercise in new technology and looking cool. And for a short, it does that fine. You don't give a shit about what happens to them, but they look so cool while you're not giving a shit about what happens to them. As a fun little demonstration of cool CGI effects and some neat visuals, it's totally passable. The next one, however, is anything but short. It's another one written by the Wachowskis describing the history of how the Matrix came into being. Mm -hmm. And on the one hand, it looks amazing. Some of the imagery is downright inspired and dripping with beautiful animation. Mm -hmm. With that said, it still doesn't excuse the fact that it makes little to no sense and is still deep fried in pretentious batter. I mean like, extra crispy pretentious batter. The story is told through the Zion Archives, which looks like every religion was smashed into a hologram card, where they reveal a past where humanity relied too much on technology. Robots did all the work and mankind just leaned back and relaxed. An interesting idea, when suddenly these machines with no emotions or thoughts of their own, suddenly get emotions and thoughts of their own. It happens. I think my toaster's looking at me funny. This apparently spawns from one of them <laughs> murdering his owner because he didn't want to be deleted. Of course, if these things were supposed to be programmed with emotions before, it's pretty obvious this will happen a long time ago, but because two popular commentaries are life just happens and man equals bad, they decide they do suddenly have feelings now. But mankind, being stupid evil us, decides to destroy them all and doesn't care for their... emotions that may or may not be there programmed in originally. Oh, the confused manity. The surviving machines create their own country and... Even though they were banished from humanity, somehow still do humanity's work. You still following this? There's a test later, and I can assure you I'm gonna fail it. 
But get this, the machine's economy does better flinging the human economy out of whack. So again, being big, stupid, evil us, we just decide to blow them all up. Mm -hmm. Because man-like boom and evil and everything wrong. But the machines survived and decided they had enough. So they begin to enslave mankind. So our big, dumb, idiot commentary selves go to the obvious logical conclusion, destroy the sky. Yeah, because they're solar operated, this would apparently destroy them all. But even that doesn't work. Again, totally not explained why. As the machines finally enslave all of humanity and eventually form the Matrix to feed off of our energy. I guess we suck. Bye. <laughs> so I'm just gonna come out and say it. The shock value in this is beyond exploited. There's some damn gritty acknowledgements of Nam, the Holocaust, street riots, real crime scenes. And they tried to make them as disturbing and gory as possible, desperate to get some sort of emotional reaction. Now don't get me wrong, I have nothing against intense imagery. If it's fit and it's deserving, I say go for it. Take us out of our comfort zone. But for a science fiction story, it doesn't really explain the science nor the fiction in any logical sense. We can't get behind the emotion of it because on top of there being no one to connect with, there's just no rational progression to what's going on. Commentary is supposed to explain why or how something is the way it is. Where this seems more focused on getting an emotional response with disturbing imagery, but no reason why. But with that said, it is still something to admire just on its visual ambition. I could totally see someone getting ideas for a stronger project just based on its dramatic layout. But in terms of making any sense or becoming emotionally invested, this is definitely not the place to look. Kid Story is the last of the Wachowski written shorts, and give it credit that it at least attempts to make an emotional connection this time, or at least feel something resembling an emotional experience. Most of it focuses on a high school boy who spends his time on the computer trying to follow the path Neo and Trinity left behind. Eventually, Neo gets in contact and agents try to capture him. We have a long chase scene and in the end, he literally makes a leap of faith and somehow gets broken out of the Matrix. Again, explaining is just for people who want to make sense of things. And we see that Neo and Trinity are there to greet him. You'd save me. You saved yourself. On the one hand, this could very easily be a recruitment video for a cult. Trust our faith, drink the Kool-Aid, and off yourself. Trust me, you'll be okay. But I think the idea behind it is more dedicating everything you have to something of value that you truly believe in. And don't get me wrong, it is a little sketchy, especially seeing how the kid commits suicide and gets rewarded for it at the end. I think it's pretty obvious that's gonna press some buttons for some people, but I'm gonna make the assumption that's not the short's intention. The intention is to create an experience of a rush. A rush of the world around you speeding up, slowing down, looking detailed, looking sloppy, and all of it building up to this great big moment of truth. It still makes no sense, but it does manage to capture a true experience. You feel the panic, you feel the intrigue, you feel the fear. You feel like the adrenaline itself is putting you in another world. And as that goes, it's pretty well directed. You can see every sketch and pencil line in every second, giving a sense of life and action knowing that every drawing is done frame by frame. It's not just a CGI puppet that they're moving, every motion is done from scratch, and you can feel the energy off of all of it. That alone makes it really worth watching. If not taken the wrong way, it is pretty impressive to check out. The next one is my absolute favorite. It starts off with a couple sparring in a training program when one of them offers the other a way out. A way to return to the Matrix and live a normal life again. What's real doesn't matter. What's important is how we live our lives. But we can't go back, Duo. We know the truth now. We can forget all of this. Confused and not knowing what to do, they partake in both a verbal and physical fight, debating what's the right choice and what isn't. Running away won't change anything! You're the one that's running away! Stop pretending! This takes up the majority of the short, all leading to a twist ending that I won't give away here, but I personally thought was a great way to finish. This, in my opinion, is what The Matrix should be. Quickly understand these characters, feel their relationship, identify with both sides of their struggle, and both the fighting and visuals match the emotional impact of what they're going through. There's no shock value or forced commentary, it's just watching these two people you sympathize with duke it out through hardship and sacrifice. It's all you need and it's done to the best of its ability. The artwork complements it great, the imagination is strong, the fighting's cool, and you're with them every step of the way. What can I say? It's hands down my personal favorite. The next one is pretty well done too. Once again, focusing more on an experience than a detailed story, World Record shows an athlete who's about to break exactly that, the world record. 
But literally, in being so fast, he breaks the chains of the Matrix and actually starts to wake up and see the truth, based only on his physical abilities. It's actually a very interesting idea. The majority of the short is simply focusing on this experience, but once again, it's all you need. You feel the limit this guy is pushing himself to, and you worry both that he'll either wake up and be destroyed by agents, or that he'll fail and not break the record at all. Or even the third option, that he might push himself so far that he might not even survive. Again, it's the simplest things that can be the most effective, and both the pacing and the animation style totally pull it off. It's also an intriguing idea that you can see another plane simply based on physical attributes. It's been discussed before by many, but this one is smart enough to know it's a visual medium and it's better to show it rather than talk about it. And it does a great job in doing so. Definitely worth the time to check out. Which brings us to Beyond, which is probably my second favorite out of the series. Again, taking a very simple idea and simply focusing on the experience of it. A young woman and some kids she stumbles across discover what is simply defined as a glitch in the Matrix. I imagine there's a lot of those with all the plot holes these movies make. But once again, the majority of the short is just them interacting with the glitch. They can make time go backwards, change the weather in small areas, and even slow down the world to see it in all its beauty. Again, the focus is the experience, and it's done with very simple yet connectable characters. It does go a little abstract near the end by hinting at... something... bad, I'm not sure what it is, but... Honestly, because it's mostly a visual experience and it's obvious there's parts left open to interpretation, I don't mind it. It's kind of like knowing through all these incredible things that you may go through in life, there's always a dark, troubling side waiting on the other end. That's what I got out of it, but maybe it doesn't mean that at all. Maybe it means something totally different. I don't know. I'm just glad they're leaving it up for us to decide instead of jamming in so much plot detail that it actually makes less sense the more you describe it. Good animation, good experience, good short. Next is a detective story. A film noir about, what else? A detective, trying to find the infamous Trinity. And that's really about it. Not much really happens outside of the search for her, but if you're a fan of dark shadows, shady blinds, and alcoholic men in trench coats, it's a fun little story. The style, once again, is great. Grainy, dark, and dripping in classic film noir style. Probably a style over substance short, but the style is so nice and the substance so not pretentious and annoying, that I think it works out okay. If you like film noir, you'll be glad you checked this out. And the last one is definitely a weird one, to say the least. Yeah, it starts out on really the surface weird. of the real world, still as apocalyptic as ever, as a rebel is chased down by machines. But it turns but out again, she's part of a team cool. that captures machines and reprograms them to think they're in a reality where they need, nay, want, to serve mankind. Sounds familiar, right? Turning the tables a little bit? They show it things like games, entertainment, lust, identity, trust, and all in probably the strangest, but still creatively entertaining way possible. You might be spending half the time asking yourself why they look like Ian Flux, and that's because the same desire worked on both. The other half, you'll be wondering what you're even looking at, but still kind of sucked in as to how they're winning over this machine using entirely visual means. With no dialogue whatsoever actually kind of makes sense. All a computer knows is words and numbers, so getting it to understand emotions would be more of a visual experience rather than a verbal one. It's a clever idea with unique layout and a different way of telling its story. And its ending is something right out of a gothic tale or a Frankenstein movie. Tortured, dark, and wondering if the right thing was ever done. It could have benefited from a bit more character, but for what it is and the time frame it has, it's pretty slick and fun to watch. It's out there, but it's definitely a short that brings you along for the ride and makes you glad that you're out there. And that's the Animatrix, and is it truly better than the Matrix movies? Personally, I think it is. True, it does have several bloated moments of self-importance, but I think you kind of come to expect that from the Matrix anyway. The shorts that work really work. And even the ones that don't still have so much artistic ambition and technical wonder that I'd still recommend checking them out anyway. Visually spectacular with some interesting ideas, if you're looking for a bit more substance for your Anna money, this is not a bad item to spend it on. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember it because... Whoa. You will never live that down. Yeah, whoa. <laughs> Yeah, I remember being a kid and watching this movie. I was like, whoa. But that, uh, that part where, uh, where humans just, you know, kill the robots, even the ones that, you know, that look like humans, that could pass for humans, like, man, it scared the hell out of me. <laughs> I 
I'm like whoa, like Neo. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like like the Matrix movie. Like uh, when I was a kid and I first saw it, yeah. Like the first time I watched it, I didn't get it. You know, I got I got some of it, but not all of it. And it it had it took me a few rewatches to finally get like oh yeah. <sighs> And like I said, I don't, I don't, I'm not a big fan of Matrix two or three. I mean, if you if you like them, that's okay, you know. I I, I can see why you like it, but uh, I I just I just ain't feeling it. Like uh, the the first one, of course, I I love I love that movie. I could watch that over and over and never get sick of it. Uh, even the Animatrix, I liked it. I liked it too. And, uh, you know, again, if you don't like this, or if you do, or if you're, like, somewhere in between where, like, uh, I kind of like it, but at the same time kind of don't, uh, it's okay, too, you know? Uh, and, uh, yeah, and one of, one, what is it? It's the kid story. It actually is uh, about how the kid that Neo talks to in Matrix Reloaded, I think, like how he got there, you know? Uh, and it's like, you know, if you didn't see this, it's like, you know, you're going to be confused. Like, I don't know, like when Neo actually references uh, that, that animation saying that, a oh, kid, I saved your life and all that. And, uh, and it's like, if you don't see this, oh, you're probably not going to get it. Like, uh, and I actually, actually, my favorite is uh, is a detective story. That one, that one was pretty badass, you know. Uh, yeah, it's all about like this detective trying to find Trinity. It kind of reminds me of um, the movie Seven a little bit. Uh, I thought I thought it was really cool. <laughs> I still think it's pretty cool. Yeah, and that last one, uh, it, yeah, it is, it, it's really cool, but at the same time a little weird. Uh, but I do I do still recommend this whole movie, you know. Uh, if you want to watch it, yeah. If you don't, that's okay, too. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's it. That's my reaction to Animatrix by Nostalgia Critic. Everyone, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.